guys, it is time again to see what is in this month's box. And it is a bright, springy, summertime box. So this month I collaborated with the amazing Hannah from Tally Mark Calligraphy. She is a calligrapher and engraver that is just next door to me in Las Vegas. So if you need services in that area, definitely check out Hannah. She's gonna be teaching us all about watercolor this month. So I'm gonna show you what comes in the box. We've got a palette. We've got the handmade watercolors and these earth tones that just are Hannah's vibe that we picked for her. And then you've got dot cards with two different brands to sample out. You'll get um, three brushes. You'll either have this set of the 264 or this set of the 135. They are round brushes. And then we have the cutest little mini frame with 12 uh, watercolor insert cards. And then of course we have our lesson. So I'm going to pull that out and show you. Mm. We have our lesson. It's printed in color this month on cardstock so that you can um, use it to practice the watercolor with. And then um, behind it you have several pieces of um, just like a general watercolor practice paper. And then in the very back, you have your artist grade watercolor paper. So that you'll be able to tell the difference. The one in the back is very stiff. The artist grade watercolor paper um, that you'll make your quote on. So let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to pull out the brushes and talk to you a little bit about brushes. Um, watercolor, when we're doing lettering, we typically use what's called a round brush. So as I mentioned, you get three different sizes. The smaller the number, the smaller the brush. So like a two, four, and a six. So the higher the number, the bigger the brush. Um, this is what you call a round brush. They can look like this. Here's a size 10. And basically it's going to come to a pointed tip at the end. And it may look very similar to a brush pen, a brush calligraphy pen. So when we're doing lettering, we typically use a round brush. Um, I just pulled this out to show you this is what a flat brush looks like. Um, so if you're in the art store and you're looking, you'll want to try a round brush. Some other tools that I love for watercolor are called um, water brushes. You can get um, off brands, but my very favorite brand also is the Pentel. And so the water goes in the tube, um, just so you have it right there the whole time you are lettering. And then the bristles just hold up very well. And this is another thing I love when I'm doing watercolor lettering. So there's a little bit about brushes. Now I want to tell you about watercolors. So we have, this is a watercolor um, palette and then it's just a full set of colors and these are hard so you can buy palettes that are semi moist you can buy different um, quality level of palettes you can get them in metallics and this was the very first one I started out with just the cheap um, Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. Great one to start out with to get um, to figure out what you like to use and uh, have a lot of different colors. So it's going to be a step up from like your <laughs> Crayola praying um, student watercolors. So an artist grade watercolor set. Um, and then the, these are, you know, hard. You can buy them, as I mentioned, semi moist. So the lid would stay sealed and then when you open them they'll be they'll be really tacky and then I wanted to show you what a professional um, watercolor liquid watercolors would look like so 
This, these are liquid watercolors when you open them up. Oh, that one's still sealed. When you open them up and squeeze them out, they are going to look more like acrylic paint. But they are going to be very concentrated, so you just need a tiny dab to get these working. So what you have in your kit are these liquid watercolors that have been squirted onto dot cards um, and then dried because it's essentially going to be just like using the dried up palette, but they started in tubes so they're highly pigmented and um, very concentrated. So they, they usually create a little bit better quality in my experience. So you have the Royal Lang Nickel on your dot cards, and then you have on the other side some Windsor and Newton, and it's actually gouache. Gouache is just um, almost the same, but even more pigmented. So it's going to be a little bit more crumbly. You'll notice probably in your packet, but I'll show you how it's going to be just fine. You know, we can just use these little crumbles. Um, it's going to be a little more crumbly because it's it's highly highly pigmented. So if you're looking to go a step up from the palette, just from the ones you buy from the art store, you can buy a set of liquid watercolors. And then if you want to go up even a step further, you can buy um, ones that are labeled professional or designers, Windsor Newton, Holbein. Um, there's some really great ones out there. Just check your art store and whatever fits within your budget. Like I said, we all start somewhere, so it's totally fine to start with just a regular old watercolor tray like this, but I did want to give you a variety to try in your kit this month. And then you also will have in your kit the handmade watercolors. And you have three colors this month. We have a green and a mustard and like a terracotta color. So I've already tested these. Mine are in a little bit bigger size. Yours, yours will be in this half pan size. I just pour all the leftovers into this larger size when I get done filling your guys' um, trays. Um, so you can see how it's a little more shiny, some of them. I'm still perfecting uh, the recipe, but I'm getting much closer. Um, so you'll notice a little bit of shimmer in the terracotta and the mustard. And then the green is just a nice vivid green. And then I was talking to you about your liquid watercolors. So, so when I'm using watercolor, as I mentioned, it's you can squeeze it out of these liquid watercolor tubes. So if you've got a red, blue, and yellow, your primary colors, um, that's all you need to mix a whole bunch of colors. Um, but essentially, you just need a dot that's about, I mean, the teeniest little dot. That little dot is going to go a very, very long ways with your watercolor. And then you just leave it there to dry. So you can kind of see once upon a time it was reds, yellows, greens, blacks and browns over here. Um, but I just leave this to dry because you can see in there where that... Um, See that dot? I just used a tiny bit and it's dried in there. But when I'm ready to paint again, all I need to do is just add a tiny bit of water to activate it and it's good to go again. Just like if I was um, painting out of this palette. So that's what you have here on your dot cards and why I wanted to mention if it's a little bit crumbly from shipping, that's okay. What you can do when you take your dot card out is to grab your palette and then because my red kind of crumbled everywhere I'm just gonna pour hopefully hopefully yours isn't crumbly but sometimes in shipping if it gets real bounced around it might and the reason this Windsor Newton is a little more crumbly is because it is gouache which means there's more pigment in it more of the um, coloring so it's going to be a little bit more cracked on your page and a little bit more crumbly but I can just put those little um, pieces in there and when I add a little bit of water it's 
that's going to go way past what I'm going to use tonight. Like I, I can save that red and it's going to be great to use. So I wanted to give you a sample of this professional grade Windsor & Newton so that you could compare the differences. Um, the Royal Lang Nickel, you can see, is a little bit more shinier on the paper. Um, but definitely play with them both and hopefully you can see the differences. And then I like to just watch and see what brands are on sale. Maybe I want to try a new color um, and see what brand works well for me. But you can definitely tell the difference in professional grade versus like a student grade. And then one other thing you can do with your dot cards, if you don't want to use it right on your card, so we're going to be dipping just right on the card to get some color. If you don't want to do that, you can just pop it off. So I'm going to see if I can just kind of pry it off. There you go. I just popped it off and I'm going to place it in my palette. So that's something you can do too if you don't want to leave it on your card. Okay, something else you will need that I usually have handy when I'm watercoloring is just some paper towels or even just a rag. Sometimes I have got like a little cloth that I keep nearby and some water. You'll want to start dedicating one jar to your water jar. This is what mine looks like. You'll have to tag me in your water jars. It's just a fun thing to see what everyone's looks like. So this is the one I've been using for years now and I've always have my water jar handy. So grab a paper towel, grab some water, and we will start with the lesson. So here is the first part of the lesson from Hannah. And I love that she included this. Um, a lot of times when we send a lesson, you'll have just an A through Z. But this is called a, I have to remind myself of the word, um, a pangram. I thought that's what it was and then I was like, hmm, am I right? Yes, a pangram. So it includes every letter of the alphabet. And I like this because then you're not just getting A, B, C, D, but you can see how each letter is connected. So you can see the Z to the Y, the D, for example. Um, so that is kind of your exemplar. Rather than A through Z, you have this pangram to use as a reference. So to get started, we're just going to do some warm-ups. And the first one she has is to just practice changing the color of whatever, whatever color you're using by adding water. So just grab one of your brushes. I'm going to grab my largest one just so it shows up nicely on the camera. And if you've never watercolored before, it's just super relaxing, at least for me. So you're, you'll want to wet your brush down. It'll be really stiff from the manufacturer. And then I put in this blue, let's see here. Once it gets a little bit of water, it should start sticking. Oh, no, that's a green. So you can see how little of the dot, the dried up dot paint, we really need. So I'm just going to get that really juicy. If you have a dropper bottle, you could use that too and just put a couple of drops in and let that sit while you're getting the rest of your things ready. All right, I'm just going to thumb to the back and grab the practice paper. Again, the practice paper is the one that's a lot more flimsy. The one at the very back will be your artist grade paper that's a lot thicker. And so I've got my brush and I'm just going to come in and get the color really saturated and start going. So what we're going for is kind of like an ombre effect here. So now that I've got that um, darkest, darkest shade there, I'm not going to dip back into the paint. I'm just going to dip once into the water. Oh, let me bring that up here so you can see. I dipped once in the water, and then I'm going to go a couple more strokes, dip again. So you're just rinsing the pigment off. 
as you move across the spectrum here. So we're going from dark to light. So go ahead and try that with just a couple colors to get started. And you can keep going essentially till there's nothing left in your brush. Okay, the next kind of warm-up we're going to do is the wet on wet technique. So I'm just going to make some circle shapes with the water, just clear water. I'm just going to do, say, two, two or three shapes. This is going to be a wet on wet technique. just to uh, demonstrate what it looks like. And you really, once I add the color there, all you have to do is just touch it to the paper. You don't even have to brush and the water absorbs the color. So that's fun to play with. And then right below it, just try the same type of shape. It really doesn't matter what shape we, we do um, without putting water on the page first. So that was wet on wet. Now I'm just going to do wet on the dry paper. And you can see immediately the difference. And there's different reasons you would want to use the different techniques depending on what you are painting. So the next a uh, little warm-up drill that we're going to do is to paint the circles. And Hannah demonstrates this on her worksheets. So I'm painting some shapes and then I'm going to add some wet on wet color. So I painted it with the water. I'm just going to add some color. Fill it up. And then I'm going to grab another color. I'm going to use this blue green here. And I'm going to draw a circle, but I'm not going to touch that edge. You can see it explode. I don't know if that's the word she used, blend. But it is like an explosion. If you just touch it together, all of a sudden you get this watercolor blended beautiful look. So I'm going to mix this yellow up and try it with that. And so you can see I didn't add any of that green. Oh, I'm way off paper. I'm way off screen here. Sorry about that. Um, but it's blending down the edges to create a really nice effect. And you can keep going through the page, the page to experiment with this, just to kind of see how colors blend. And that's what's so fun about watercolor uh, lettering is it's so just carefree and whimsical at least typically it's not, um, but there's, it, to me it's a lot more free than like last month when we did calligraphy, pointed pen calligraphy, and there's a lot of rules and structure. 
watercolor can just kind of be really creative. So we're going to use the same skills with our lettering. If you haven't done any lettering at all, I did include um, just some basic strokes and the lowercase or the minuscule alphabet. So if you haven't done lettering, I would suggest stopping, grabbing a pencil, and practicing with this exemplar. It's a good idea, even if you have done it, to practice so that you remember the basic strokes as well. So take a little break, practice this if you need to, and then we're gonna use our brush to, to make the strokes and apply pressure and the same types of tips that we do with all of our other tools, the brush pens, the pointed pens, everything. We'll use the paintbrush to apply those uh, same skills. So I'm going to go in and Hannah shows on the page the compound curve. So I could lighten it up like I did the ombre at the top. And we're back to pra practicing if you haven't seen that, the thick and the thin. So again, if you're brand new, heavy pressure down to get thick lines and thin pressure up or light pressure up to create those thinner lines. So we're going to go light, heavy, light, heavy, light. Or thin, thick, thin, thick. And again, that's why we are using the round brushes is because when you add pressure, they are going to spread out. But when you release them, they come back to a nice point. Um, Hannah mentions in the worksheet to practice changing the value or color um, after we've already drawn a stroke or a letter. So we've still got some wet in here. I could go back in and add some of this red for it to blend. And that may not have been the best color to demonstrate. Let me grab, um, or let me just use some of this dark blue. See how little of paint, that little blob was, will, is gonna last me forever. Um, so let me add a little dark blue in there. Just play with this and see what kind of colors you can mix, how much you like blending if you like the wet on wet, if you like blending the dry. Let's see if I can add, well, we'll just do this yellow. So play with that and see what kind of colors and blending you can get with that um, thick and thin compound curve. You can practice with your brush also the heavy downstrokes to get thick and thin up, just like we would a brush pen. So if you need to adjust the way you're holding it or turn your page, you can do that. Whatever way you can get thick down, thin up is what you want so that you have variation in your lettering. So this practice page here is pretty full, but I'm not just gonna throw it away once it dries. I always save all of my watercolor paper. I'm gonna use the back. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and grab another sheet of paper. And you could go through the alphabet. I might switch to a smaller brush. Let me grab a really small one. So we have a, have a variety here. And a little tip, if you 
didn't know this, when you're done using your brushes, um, so if I, I wiped on the paper towel, and then just kind of rub your fingers along it to shape it back to its nice form so it keeps its shape. I'm gonna switch to the little brush just for some variation and practice some of the lowercase letters that you saw in the exemplar. So you can practice just like that, varying the colors and playing with the practice letters from this practice sheet here. Like I said, a lot of times we get A to Z as a full exemplar. This will have the strokes broken up for you um, if you're a beginner. Or we can go back to Hannah's very first page where she has the pangram and try doing this phrase, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so that you can practice your letter connections and see some of Hannah's style and also blend some of your work together. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, a rainbow um, blending. Just kind of start with red, move to orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. If you wanted to use a light pad to put Hannah's phrase underneath to practice, you can do that if you're not comfortable yet. You could also just draw some straight lines or a little bit of a guideline um, so that you stay on a baseline. Um, or you could just free on it and have fun play. Either way, it's going to be fun to practice. Whatever you are most comfortable with. I am going to just draw um, so a few straight lines. So that I'm not completely wonky showing you how I might practice.
okay, I clearly had yellow on my mind when I was <laughs> painting that. Um, but you get the idea, just kind of a variation. And it's fun to see how, like this one, I'm gonna get that in there, this yellow and orange blended together nicely because it was wet on wet. Um, and then that blue and the green is blending together nicely on that wet and wet. Um, so just play with it. Use up your practice sheets and really just just play and see what you can create, what pretty combinations you can create with all the letters you already know and all the things you know about calligraphy. Um, and again, if you are brand new, just remember thick down, thin up, or heavy pressure down, light pressure up. That's how you're going to create the nice variation in your lettering. So once you've used up all your practice pages and you are ready for a challenge, we are going to do the quote for this month. So I want you to use the heavy duty artboard in the back. This is the Strathmore and it's linked um, in the blog with our resources. Um, and just immediately you can tell the difference. Um, I think in the student grade, just this practice paper and this art paper. Um, so you could cut this in half if you wanted two, two quotes, um, but either way, the quote this month that you guys chose was the days that make us happy, make us wise. So Hannah's got this beautiful layout in here where she did an angled look and then see how her blue and green just blend together beautifully there. And then I lettered it in a completely different style just to give you two different options. And it looks like this, the days that make us happy, make us wise. And for, the, for mine, I used the um, handmade watercolors. So with the handmade watercolors, I do like to just add um, two or three drops to kind of get it activated. Um, you can use your brush too, however, however it works for you. Put in a couple drops to get it to get it softened and get it ready to go. And then when I was working on this quote, I just, I wanted to use all the colors just so you had a sample of what it could look like. Um, and so I just used the terracotta, the mustard, the green mustard terracotta. Um, so I'm just kind of going to walk you through how I did that. And you can see that it's very loose, just as Hannah's is, just a very loose style. Okay, so if you like the angled layout, you can... Again, either use a light pad or just kind of draw you some some guidelines. Um, and I think I think I'm gonna actually do this angled one just so I can practice Hannah's style as well. But I am gonna use the handmade watercolors so you can see how they how shiny and pretty they are. Okay. So what I just did there, I noticed when I picked up my brush, it had, um, okay, can you see that? It had quite a blob on the end, and I knew that when I touched that to the paper, it would come right off. And so I wouldn't have been able to keep a nice, um, consistent line. I would have ended up with a blob. So a lot of the times what after I swish it around, I'll just touch the side of the container. That way you have the nice point on the end. The days. 
And then I think I want to start um, mixing. So I'm just using my palette here. I'm gonna pick up some of the terracotta and transition these. And then since happy is kind of a standout word in the quote, I'm going to switch to our green. You can use any combination of colors or you can use one color, however you want to do it. Um, I just wanted to utilize all three colors like I did on my other sample to show you how you could do that. The days that make us... And I'll switch back to the terracotta. And then for any type of block lettering or just smaller lettering um, in general, I'm going to switch to my tiniest brush here. Um, just to credit the author of the quote. And there you go. I have to say how in love I am with the shimmery and these handmade paints. I hope you're loving them too. Um, if this is your first month, you can use them for more than just watercolors. Um, of course, they work perfectly as watercolors, but you can, you can also um, load up your brush and paint it onto the back of your calligraphy nib and use it as ink as well. Okay, we've got our quote. 
um, I did just want to point out again, don't stress too much with this watercolor lettering. You can see how loose and free, um, still consistent. Draw your baseline so that it's all going in the same direction, but have fun with it. Be free, mix up the colors, blend them together, see what you can make, um, and just play. Just have fun, take time to create for yourself and enjoy the process. Okay, and the very last thing we have in our box is our project for the month, which I'm so excited about. We have this small little frame I thought was perfect to sit in the kitchen, on your desk, um, wherever you spend your day with a motivational word. So you can have it going either direction, you know, uh, portrait or landscape. And then we've got, well, Hannah picked out um, a handful of motivational words for you to put on your card. So you can change it out every month or essentially however you want to use it. We just cut out 12 for you to do. So I'm going to try some of Hannah's and then I think she has 10 here. Um, just uh, play with it, have fun, share with us what you do with your um, words and how you display it. We'd love to see and then um, what other words you come up with. So she's got some really great words and phrases here. And then, yeah, tell us what else you come up with. And I can't wait to see what you all create. I'm probably going to use, I'm just getting my brush out now. I'm probably not going to use the smallest brush I gave you and probably not the largest one for this, but a medium sized brush um, because it's not too small, but definitely not huge either. So I'm going to use a medium sized brush and I'm just going to play with color. I'm going to blend colors and I'm going to see what pretty, what pretty combinations I can make. So I could do the wet on wet if I want to do it just in clear water first. And then I could grab my colors and just touch them to the water. See it travel all the way along there. And then maybe I want some blue. And purple. So this is the fun part, blending the colors and seeing how it turns out because, I mean, you do have somewhat of control over it, but I can't control like where that blue travels to. It could stay right there or it could travel through the whole word. And this type of R is called a running R. In case you're curious. It's not your typical um, not your typical uh, cursive type R like that. This is called a running R. Okay, I've got some of those samples made up. 
Um, I just, I really want you to just have fun with this and just enjoy creating. Um, blend the colors. I just, watercolor is so relaxing to me. Um, to switch it up just a little bit, I'm going to show you one other way that we could do this. If you wanted to paint um, like the ombre style background uh, and then letter over top of it, that can make a beautiful piece as well. So I'm going to go back to that first lesson where it was dark and I just dip it in the water once and move up. And then once that dries, you can um, use your small paintbrush with just a little bit of the black. Um, and you're going to want it to be not super wet because you don't want it to get um, too blobby. You could use um, the black right over top or you could also grab a brush pen or a pointed pen and go over the top of it as well. And then if it's still not um, working out as well as you hope, go back to the basic strokes with that black and white page um, and practice those lowercase letters. Um, and just, yeah, just keep practicing and you might even go back to the blending and tie it all together. So have fun with this. Share what you did. Show us how you display your words, what words you chose. I'd love to see it. And I know Hannah would love to see it too. So thank you guys for hanging out with us. And I will be back with another tutorial for you next month. And we'll be doing all about leather next month. Thanks, guys. Enjoy this and talk to you soon.